Um, here is our inspiration for today, a little galaxy scene. Um, I did post a quick lesson of this on TikTok, so you may have seen it before, but today we're going to go through it way more in depth and um, help you kind of get through the whole thing with more detailed instructions. And it'll be fun. I really love these kinds of paintings because they're very freeing. You can do a lot of stuff and it'll still kind of look like a galaxy. So you don't have to follow my instructions exactly. If you want to kind of deviate, that is totally cool. And it will still end up looking like a galaxy. So we will refer back to that throughout the um, live here. And again, I have my paper tape down and we are going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you need to do is um, 12 round brush will work just, just great. Um, the first thing that we need to do is put a little bit of water in each of our watercolor pans, um, if, especially if you're working with dry watercolors like I am. This just gets them dissolved a little bit and ready to paint with. So we may not use all of these colors, but I just like to have them all ready just in case. And as we go through this painting here today, I will try to go at a speed that works for most people. Um, if you need a minute or if I'm going too fast, please do let me know in the comments. Um, I do have to, I do try to keep these to an hour though. So at some point I do have to move on. And yes, this lesson will be uploaded to YouTube later. So if you fall behind or if you miss a step or anything like that, just kind of move on with me and then you can always go back and watch it later. Um, there's no problem with that. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. And yeah, just be respectful, be gentle with yourself. This is all just for practice. This is not, um, you know, <laughs> this is not a competition or life or death. We're just here to practice. So take it easy on yourself, especially if you're a beginner with watercolor. We're just going to have fun and play around with some paints today. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is mix our primary colors for this galaxy. And we're going to do that so that we can first so that we can um, paint it all at once. So I'm going to move this out of the way so that you can see my mixing palette. Are watercolor pans better than tubes? Um, I find that they're pretty similar and I use tubes just because they're more cost effective and I just refill each of the pans when they get low. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of cheaper to do it that way than the pans. But the pans are slightly more saturated, but I really don't find a difference there. Anyway, uh, the colors that we need are a orange, pink, purple, and like a dark blue. Most of those are just going to come straight from your palette. Whatever orange you have, just use that orange. Whatever um, pink you have, just use that pink, etc. So I've just got this cadmium orange that I'm going to mix here. And you're going to add a little bit of water to it so that it flows decently well, but you don't want to water it down too much. We still want some pretty strong colors, and I will swatch all of these for you as well. So here's that orange. Again, just using the orange in my palette. Difference in paper types. Um, I use cold press, it's just more textured and um, I think it holds water a little bit better. Hot press is usually smoother and I feel like it warps a little bit more, but I just always use cold press so, that's, so I don't have that problem. I have a magenta, so I'm gonna use that as pink. If you just have red, that's fine too, but if you have pink, go ahead and use that. that pink. And then we'll need a purple. So I'm going to mix together pink and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just mix together pink and or red and blue and make yourself a just regular purple color. Maybe lean it towards blue a little bit. So add a little bit more blue than pink. Just because we already have a pink there. Doesn't have to match mine exactly, but something like that. My favorite watercolors are these Windsor Newton watercolors for sure. They are professional quality, so they're a little bit more expensive than regular watercolors. Um, but I am a professional artist, so I can kind of justify that expense to myself. Um, but I've used plenty of other brands that are good. These are just my favorite just because they're so saturated and pigmented and um, I just really like them. The last color is a really dark blue, so I'm just going to mix together a couple of blues, maybe a little gray and a little brown. Just honestly mix together whatever dark colors you have on your palette. That'll be fine, and it should just come up into like a dark blue like that. You can mix black in there if you need, um, if you need it to be a little bit darker. 
So this is our galaxy palette. I like these colors together. I think they're pretty. And go ahead and mix all of those. Don't overthink it. It doesn't have to match mine exactly. I'll give you a minute and then we'll get started. Uh, did you go to art school? I did not. I was a I had an art minor in college. Studied psychology. Um, and then I had an art minor, just honestly, to keep taking classes. And um, I did not think that I was going to be a professional artist until kind of COVID happened and I was able to spend more time on it. And it just kind of happened organically that way, which is really nice. And I love it. But you definitely don't need to go to art school to be able to be an artist. Okay, here we go. Get your colors all mixed up. And what we're going to do, I'll just kind of give you the general gist and then I'm gonna do it and I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up. So we're gonna put a sort of stripe of water from our cup. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, that's fine. Um, in kind of a diagonal line right here. Wherever you want the light spot of the galaxy to be, that's where you're gonna put this water. So I'm gonna kind of have mine going up at a diagonal. This way you can have it going any way that you want. And then we're gonna start with our orange and our pink colors and work our way up. And then we're gonna go into our purple and then our dark blue. And that stripe of water will keep that light spot a little bit lighter and we're gonna try and blend all those colors together. And that'll be the first layer and then we're gonna do that again um, to further saturate the colors once that first layer is dry. So that's the kind of gist, what we're gonna do. And I will talk you through it and then I'll give you time to catch up later, okay? So I'm gonna take, make sure you're using your biggest brush that you have for this. Whatever brush you have that's gonna cover a lot of paper, I want you to use that. So switch to your biggest brush that you possibly can use. <laughs> um, and start by putting down a sort of loose stripe of water, diagonally or straight, wherever you want it to be. And I like to kind of bounce my brush around so it's not just like a straight line, it's a little bit bumpy and wavy, you can see that texture there. And then you're going to go straight into your orange. Put that down on maybe a little less than a quarter of the paper down here. Just drop it into that section of water. And I'm just using kind of circular motions to cover a lot of area at a time. Don't worry about the texture, that's fine. You can kind of smooth it out a little bit if you want. Then you're gonna go straight into your pink and start putting that down on top. You don't really even need to wash your brush because all these colors are gonna to mix together anyway. And we'll just fill up another slightly less than a quarter of the page with the pink, making little circles. And then we are going to go into the purple color and continue filling in again with those little circular shapes just kind of dropping it into that water section and you should be working quickly here so that all these colors can blend together don't take too much time it does not need to look good right now we're just covering the paper with paint right now so don't feel like it needs to look a certain type of way. It does not. And then finally, we're gonna cover the top with our dark blue. Okay, uh, and I bet it looks like a hot mess right now. And that's just what it is. <laughs> You can, options for you, you can pick it up a little bit and tilt it to blend those colors together a little bit better. If you have a big puddle forming of water and paint, like I do, you can take a completely dry brush and gently tap that area and that will pick up that excess water and paint. If you lost your light spot, you can use that dry brush to pick up some of the pigment in that area if you wanna sort of get that light spot back. So I'm just using my dry brush and kind of tapping it here. You can also use a damp brush and blend things together, but really don't need, you don't need to focus on that too much right now. 
you have some areas like this that you just wanna to blend together a little bit better, you can, but you really don't have to. Okay, and we're gonna let that dry fully. And believe me, it's okay if it looks like a hot mess right now because that's just the way watercolor works. <laughs> Just doing a little tilting here. And there we go. We're gonna let that dry flat. And if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments because we're gonna wait for this paper to dry. And that will take a couple minutes, um, just depending on the humidity in your area. So feel free to ask any art questions or any life questions. Do you ever use a heat gun for drying? I have a hair dryer in here. Um, I don't ever dry my hair, but I always have my hair dryer in here for drying my watercolor paintings. Um, so yeah, I definitely do. I think a heat gun is a little too hot sometimes. Um, so I would recommend a hairdryer, but to each their own. We are painting a galaxy today. Brand of brushes. I like my Princeton Neptune brushes. Those are my favorite. Cool, cool, cool. Following along on Procreate. That's awesome. I love when people... Um, do these tutorials in a different medium. Do you have any tips for avoiding hard edges? Um, yes, a couple tips. Use a big brush because if you use a small brush, you're not covering enough paper to um, keep working on it while it's still wet, like the paint that you put down will dry faster. So if you're using a, a brush like this to cover this entire paper, um, that will lead to some hard edges and textures. So use a bigger brush. And then also working quickly helps a lot too because then the paint doesn't dry before you get a chance to kind of work on it. Um, so those are two. Sometimes it just has to do with the paint that you're using or how much water is in the paint um, or the humidity in your area. Some of, if it's really dry where you are that can affect that too. So you'll just have to kind of play around with that um, and as you get better and more experienced with watercolor, I don't know how long you've been painting, but um, that's something that you just kind of learn with practice. Mine is looking rough. Yep, same. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. That's okay. Um, take a sip of what are you sipping on too. Can you show us what the final painting will look like? Absolutely. Here's the final painting. You know, eventually it'll get there. <laughs> When you make bookmarks, do you cut your paper that size or buy them like that? I cut my paper that size. I buy big pieces of Arches watercolor paper at the art store. They're like 22 by 30 inches. And um, then I cut them up to different sizes. And that way I can make bookmarks or I can make any size paper that I want to paint on. Um, and it's a little bit cheaper that way than buying a pad of like pre-cut paper, smaller. So do you only use one jar of water or do you have a clean water jar too? I'm a nasty gal and I just use one cup <laughs> and it's really gross and dirty because I've used it for years. Um, and I know some people are very particular about using a dirty cup and a clean cup. I have never been that fastidious. I'm always just, I'm just gonna use the, the water that's in the cup. And it really like, you'd be surprised how dirty you can get this water looking and how little it'll affect the paint. I can give you a demonstration right now. So you can see this water is murky and gross from all the paint that I've used. But if I dip my brush into it and swatch it for you on this paper, it's basically clear still. So um, it takes a lot for that water to get actually dirty to the point that it will affect your painting, in my opinion. Um, does the type of water matter? No, I just use tap water. Um, could you do more tutorials so I can make some pieces for my family and friends for birthdays? I've got so many tutorials on my page. You gotta just check out my page. <laughs> I have lots of tutorials. Okay, um, I'm going to just hit this with a hairdryer super quick so that we can kind of move on. If you've got a hairdryer, you can feel free to use that. Um, just to kind of get things moving a little bit. Sorry for the noise. I'll be over soon. And you just want your paper to be, it's okay if it's damp, you just don't want it to be wet anymore, if that makes sense. So I've just got a couple spots here that are still being problematic. Okay. 
that'll do. Um, we're gonna use the exact same colors, pretty much, to do another layer in mostly the same way that we already did. So if you haven't already, mix some more of these same colors that we just used. So orange, pink, Purple. And that dark blue. I'm just using Payne's gray now, just for simplicity, but whatever blue, you can mix blue and black together, that would work too. Um, yeah, whatever, however you wanna make a dark blue, that'll work. Any advice for curling or bumpy paper? It will always do that. There is nothing you can do to stop it. <laughs> it will always happen and you gotta accept it. That's the advice. <laughs> Mine is too. Mine is definitely wavy and warped. That's just what happens. It's hard for you to see that because you're looking over the top of it, but um, it's just what happens to watercolor paper. And slightly more expensive watercolor paper can warp less, but it will always warp a little bit, especially if you're covering the entire thing with water. So. Um, yeah, that's the answer for that, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to do pretty much the same technique as we did last time. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to kind of shift everything down a little bit. So I want the uh, orange, pink, and purple colors to take up less space, and I want the rest of it to be a little bit darker. So we're just going to kind of shift everything down. Since we're layering over the top, it really doesn't really matter what's underneath, and it will still work out. So. Just start with your orange and throw that down in the bottom here. And we're just gonna work in small sections like before. Sorry, my boyfriend's watching football. I don't know if you heard that. Um, so a little bit of orange down here. Then we're gonna start mixing the pink in like we did last time exactly the same way so you can see I'm just taking up less space here with this with these three colors just because we want this to appear more like a night scene and I'm realizing that my spacing was looking more like a sunset so that's why we're doing that and then moving on to purple and then once you get to the purple what you're going to do is keep filling in like we're doing before and then as you get to this light spot just take a pause clean off your brush and use a clean damp-ish brush to just blend out the edge of that color right where you get this light spot and you can still add texture in there but that way it, it stays lighter than the stuff around it that makes sense. So just keep working. I like, again, I like to use these little circular motions here. You guys came across this at the wrong time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it will be uploaded to YouTube later, so you can follow along later. And um, I do host these fairly regularly on Saturdays, so you can always come to the next one. Okay, and then we're going to fill in the rest of it with that dark blue. So this is where we're gonna bring that um, light down a little bit. And again, fill in a little spot here. Take a clean, damp brush and blend out the edge near the um, galaxy area. Continue filling in on the other side, do the same thing. What type of brushes do you recommend for beginners? Honestly, I mean, it's hard because I don't know your budget, so that's 
part of the you know reason I hesitate to recommend things. But um, these Princeton Neptune brushes are a little bit more expensive, but they hold up so well that I really recommend them over like a cheap brand of brushes just because you'll use them for ever and um, they don't like fall apart like some brands of brushes do. So I use these Princeton Neptune brushes and I do really recommend them. It's not sponsored or anything, I wish, but um, yeah, I do really like them. So we're just gonna keep working up here. Again, just using that dark blue color now and keeping that light area for the galaxy. Remember, you don't want to make a hard line for this area. We're kind of, it's kind of like a cloud. So we're kind of keeping that texture there and then blending it out. And that way we don't get any like hard um, geometric shapes. If you lose your light spot, remember you can always use a, a clean dry brush to pick up some color in the middle there. And that'll bring that um, light area back. Why do you fully color cover layer one? So watercolors are great for layering. Um, you really are supposed to layer watercolors generally if you're following like traditional watercolor technique. Um, and it's because watercolor is translucent, I would say it's um, see-through. And so as you add more layers, you can't see as much of that white paper showing through. Um, and so you can see this layer is way darker than this layer, this first layer. And that's how we get that contrast and how it looks like a night sky. And we get this contrast with the galaxy here. Um, yeah. So watercolors are great for layering and that's a good thing to kind of learn as you're starting watercolor journey. The watercolor journey is to practice layering and making a painting with several uh, layers in it. So you can see this is uh, looking a little bit more like a galaxy, like a night sky. We're being a little bit more controlled with this layer and um, the darker colors definitely help as well. And I like to drop a little bit of like watered down blue into the middle of the galaxy here, just to give it a little bit more texture in there. Do you post the lives on YouTube or Instagram? They are on YouTube. My YouTube channel is linked in my bio so you can find it there. And all of the previous ones are there as well. All right, so that's the second layer. We're gonna do one more layer after this of just kind of touch-ups. Um, so let this dry, finish up where you're at, let this dry. And then when you have a chance, let me know in the comments where you're at, if you're done with all of that, or if you still need some time, and then we'll move on. You also feel free to um, ask questions in the comments. And since you're a captive audience, I'm gonna plug my stuff. So I have an Etsy shop. Um, it is linked in my bio. If you'd like to check out the, the paintings that I make to sell, that would be lovely, mean a lot to me. Um, and so you can do that there. I've got a Patreon, it, which is linked in my bio as well. Um, and I do extra sort of full length art tutorials that I upload to Patreon only. So you can join for that and you also get some art benefits um, there too. So if you want to join my Patreon, please check that out. All my art supply recommendations are linked to my bio as well, my Amazon storefront. So if you want more detailed recommendations of my watercolor supplies or the other paints that I use, feel free to check that out. And then um, I also do take tips if you would like to tip me for this lesson. Um, that is not required, but always, always appreciated. Um, you can do that via the Venmo that's listed in my bio, or if you click on the link in my bio um, and scroll to the very bottom of the link tree, you'll find the tip jar. Um, and then if you're watching on YouTube, all of that will be in the description, but if you click on the tip jar, it just makes it easier to send me a tip. So you're welcome to do that as well, and I appreciate you um, supporting me in any way that you choose to. I am a full-time artist and this is my job. So <laughs> I do rely on people um, liking my art and buying it and supporting me. And I'm very lucky to do so. 
Please detail the brushes and the watercolor used brand size. I've done this a few times already. Um, the paper is Strathmore watercolor paper, the paints are Windsor and Newton, and the brushes are Princeton Neptune, and I'm using um, this oval wash brush. See, there's other are there drawbacks to using the hair dryer instead of just waiting for it to dry. Sometimes, um, if you use the hair dryer and you're a little too aggressive with it, it can push the paint around in a different way, um, and you can use that to your advantage sometimes. But um, sometimes it's like it pushes it around and creates texture where you don't want it. So, so air drying will give you like the the flattest texture that you can get, but. Um, so sometimes I'll wait for it to air dry a little bit and then I'll hit it with a hair dryer just to speed up the last little bit of the process. Um, but if you don't care about the texture, then you can just use the hair dryer. To use a chemical to make it dry faster like alcohol or to tolum? I don't know what that is. Um, no, I don't mix anything to my watercolors. I don't think you should. Um, I've never heard of mixing alcohol into watercolors. There's alcohol ink but I don't think you mix alcohol in there. It dries pretty quickly on its own, depending on the humidity, it's water, so um, it doesn't take forever to dry, but yeah, there's not really anything to mix into it to make it dry faster. Good question though. Is this going to be a lightning bolt? Nope, it's a galaxy, so we're gonna add some stars at the end of this. Any other questions? Let me know if you're painting along with me, where you're at, if you're ready to move on, or if you need another minute. Take a sip of your beverage, whatever you're drinking. How long have you been painting? Um, since I could hold a brush in my chubby little baby hands. I, um, I've just always really liked it. So it's always been a hobby and um, I'm very lucky to be a full-time artist. I'm so sad that I missed the first part of this. It'll be uploaded to YouTube. So don't worry, you'll be able to find it later on my YouTube channel. Ready for the next step? Okay, cool. Ready, ready. I'm seeing some readies. Okay, so the next step, it's not super complicated. It, we're basically just touching up everything here. So let me show you. We're starting to look a little bit more like the original painting here. Um, we're gonna kind of darken up the, the galaxy, at least for me a little bit, just because it's a little bit too light here and I want it to be a little bit more subtle. Um, and then you can also continue to build on that saturation so every layer you add on top will make it darker and darker and darker. So you can really do as many layers as you want. It starts to get a little sticky and weird in there if you get more than like four or five layers, but you can still add layers. Um, and yeah, I think I'm just gonna kind of do that. So again, using the exact same colors, this is where you're going to sort of look at your own painting. I'm gonna give you options and you're going to need to kind of diagnose your own painting and figure out what you want to do with it. Um, some options for you. You can continue to add some saturation with that dark blue in the same way that we have been doing. So just adding that, adding a section. You can either leave those edges as hard edges and they will eventually dry, or you can kind of blend them out with a damp brush. So that's an option for you. You can also move your way down to the lighter colors and continue adding texture and saturation there, which I might do down here with the purple. Again, I would recommend just putting down a section and then using a clean damp brush to blend that out on the edges. Do you need to clean off your paint pots when you're done? Not really. Um, I'm really not that neat with my paints. <laughs> They're so saturated. Any watercolor paint really is so saturated that getting a little bit of another paint in it does not really affect it. You can see I don't really clean my brush between picking up paints, um, unless I'm working with yellow. Um, and that's just because they're saturated and a little bit of a different paint getting in there is not gonna affect it really uh, monumentally, so. Is the texture added by your circular brush strokes? Yes, so that's how we're adding that sort of cloud-like texture is those circular brush strokes that I'm using. Um, and that's what helps it give that sort of galaxy texture. That's a good question. So I really like to just use circular motions like that. 
Okay, and then I am going to just use some like watered down um, blue to just fill in this light galaxy area a little bit better. Um, just because I don't want it to be so, so bright. You can leave a few bright spots if you want, but I just want to dull it down a little bit. We're going to add stars to it later, so that will lighten it up too. And then don't panic too much about like what's going on down here. As you can see in the painting, we have a line of trees down here. So the very bottom of the painting is gonna be covered up later, which is why we're not really focusing on it too much. We just want a little color there to peep through the gaps in the trees, um, but you don't need to like worry about it too much. I've just got a bunch of texture down there. It does not really matter. Um, it's going to be covered up later anyway. Okay, so I think I'll just do a couple other touch-ups. I'll give you guys time to do that to your own paintings as well. And you'll reach a point where you have started to overwork it. So if you start thinking the way that I kind of figure this out in my brain, if I'm starting to overwork it, is if I'm not thinking like, oh, I want to add this or I want to work on this. But if I'm if my mental thoughts are saying I want to fix this or I want to fix this area, that's when you know you're starting to to get into overdoing it territory. So if you're if you kind of transition into fixing instead of adding or, um, or, or I don't know, layering, I guess, um, that's when you might want to just take a breath and stop for a minute <laughs> because you can overwork and then it looks overworked and um, there's just a point where you kind of get up to and over where it looks good and it starts to look a little bit worse. So just keep that in mind and understand that there is a time to stop and <laughs> you will reach that point. And I think I'm probably getting there. Sometimes if I get bored like this, or if I get, if I'm just waiting for you guys, then I start to just kind of mess with it too much. So this is a reminder to myself as well. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone, put the brush down. Mine looks like trash. So I want you to remember what we said at the beginning. This is just for practice. I have painted this a few times before, so I have practiced it a few times, um, and we are just here to learn something. So even if you don't like how yours is looking right now, first of all, let's finish the painting before you think it looks like trash. And then second of all, just understand that this is all practice and um, it is okay and does not make you a bad artist if you um, make a bad painting. <laughs> Put the brush down and back away from the paper, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Put the brushes down. Okay, we're going to let this dry. Whenever you're done overworking it, we're going to let it dry. <laughs> um, I'm going to hit mine with a hairdryer so that I can kind of show you where we're moving on to next. Um, but if you're just going to let yours air dry, that is fine. You have a little bit of time. So I'm so sorry for the noise.
Okay. And really, to be honest, all that needs to be dry is like the bottom third of your painting. Um, so if the top of it is still a little wet, that's okay. Just the bottom third needs to be dry right now. If you can hear me. Um, just dry the bottom third right now. So if the rest of it is still wet, that's okay. We can just move on. Excuse me. So next step, we're going to add some trees. And this will kind of ground, whenever you're painting a big sort of sky heavy piece, having some sort of mountain scene or trees in the foreground at the bottom kind of grounds, pun intended, um, your painting. And it makes it look a little bit more based in reality. So we are going to, oh good. Glad to know that the, it mutes the hairdryer. Um, so for these trees, um, mix up a really dark color. I'm gonna mix together Payne's gray and a little bit of sap green. So just, or you can use black and green if you want. You just want a really super, super dark, saturated green, almost black. And I'm switching to my detail brush here. And I will zoom you in as well. Reality is overrated, amen. Um, so let's see, how will this be? That looks good. So I'm using my detail brush here and we're gonna start adding trees. And I have painted a lot of trees and here is the way that I like to paint them. Um, I'm gonna use my detail brush and add a straight line. Gets a little wider toward the bottom, but that doesn't really matter because it's gonna get covered up anyway. So that, that's fine, it does not need to look good. And then at the top, I'm gonna use sort of almost the side of my brush and start just adding like little dashes going along the trunk. And I like to angle them up a little bit, like a V shape, just slightly. And I'm just using these little dashes and sort of collecting them together to form these um, tree branches. And then once your um, brush runs out of paint, you can get more. I'm using super saturated paint here that does not have a lot of water in it, which helps with this technique. So try and mix up a color that does not have a bunch of water in it. And you're just gonna kind of work your way down the tree, adding branches that get slightly larger every time. And then at some point they don't get larger anymore. Um, they don't get any longer, they just kind of stay the same length. So you don't wanna make a whole triangle with your tree. You just wanna make a sort of narrow cone shape. And then down here at the very bottom, since we're adding a whole line of trees, it doesn't really matter what these branches look like <laughs> because we're only gonna see the top half of this tree. So then I just kind of say, fuck it and fill in the rest of it. <laughs> just with kind of a flat wash here. And you can, you, do, you can do that with a bigger brush if you want to. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that again. Again, there are many, many ways to paint trees. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just gonna show you my favorite way and it does take a little bit of practice. So just be patient with yourself. Um, I like to add different heights of trees. You wanna space them out differently. So some of them are closer together. Some of them are further apart. They don't have to be exactly perfectly vertical either. So just keep that in mind. They don't have to look perfect. In fact, it looks better if they don't look perfect. And we're just going to add some more branches to the sky. So I did that vertical line and then I'm using kind of the side of my detail brush to add in these branches. And as you can see here, you stop being able to distinguish those branches once you get to about halfway. So you just kind of fill it in at that point. You can leave a few spots where you can see the light through there. Add another tree here. And we're just gonna work our way across the paper, adding trees. Bob Ross would be happy. That's who I learned this technique from. I kind of adapted it from his oil paintings to watercolor, but uh, Bob Ross is great at painting trees, so if you ever need more advice on how to paint trees and just like a relaxing afternoon, just throw on some Bob Ross, man. And you can really paint like um, entire paintings with these kinds of trees. Um, if you need practice with them, just fill up an entire page with trees. Um, 
and you will be really good at painting trees by the time you're done with that. I agree, the trees do bring it all together. It's really amazing how, like I said, the big sky paintings just really need like something in the foreground. Um, Cause otherwise it just, I think, I think the brain doesn't know what it's looking at if you don't have something in the foreground. If you have trees, it just, you know, it's fairly clear that this is now a sky and your brain is like, oh yeah, that's, that's a sky. funny how that illusion kind of comes together with that. Yeah, that's true too. It shows the scale of the sky. Good point. Feel free to ask any other questions that you have in the comments while we um, while we work our way across. Um, I will show those in a slow motion and just on the next tree here, the, um, the branch, how to paint the branches. Just let me paint another tree here. Okay, so again, vertical line for the trunk. And then I'm holding my brush like kind of almost sideways here and I'm using kind of the corner and really lightly touching it here at the top and kind of working back and forth to add these little branches, little dots and dashes, and they're slightly pointed upward. And you want to leave some little spaces in there too, where you can just see the trunk. You don't want to fill up the whole thing with branches. And as you work your way down, you're just going to press a little harder and bring them out a little bit further from the trunk. And then once you get to about halfway, it really does not matter what you do. You're just going to kind of loosely fill it all in. Work smarter, not harder. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have you been gradually making the trees darker or is the paint just drying? Um, the paint looks darker when it's wet and it dries lighter. So if you see the trees um, that are darker, those are the ones that are still wet. Um, I also am just, I keep mixing color continually up here. So sometimes it turns out a little bit darker and sometimes it's a little bit lighter and that's just, and that's fine. The variation is actually good. Should have waited, my trees are blending with my sky. Yeah, that's why I uh, I should probably should have emphasized it more, so that's my bad, but I wanted you to dry the um, paper before we moved here because that's exactly what'll happen, but that's okay. It's just extra artistic. It's a little, it's a quirk and not a flaw in your painting and that's okay. Yeah, more abstract, exactly. So 
And while we're painting trees, I'll just kind of chat about what's been going on in my art life recently. So um, I used to do these paint and sips pretty often, every week or so. Um, and I had to stop back in February just because I was A, getting a little bit burned out on it, and B, because I um, have taken on a book writing project over this entire year. Um, it's a watercolor instructional book, which I'm very, very excited for. Um, and I turned in my manuscript back in July, and we've been kind of working on editing it and um, finalizing the photos and everything. And that'll come out next April. So I'm very, very excited about that. If you follow me, you'll hear plenty about that as the release date comes closer, you can, I think, find it for pre-order on Amazon right now, if you search my name. Um, but it, that's very exciting, so that's why we, um, I haven't been doing these paint sips quite as often. Um, and I'm just very excited for that book to come out. <laughs> um, and I'm excited for you all to get to read it. It's, I mean, it's in my voice, I wrote it all, and I, I did all the paintings. Um, so it's basically like the book form of these paint sips. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out on Amazon, and I think you can at least add it to your wish list, and if not, pre-order it now. So that's super exciting. Are you going to start the paint and sips back up? I looked forward to them all week when you did. I, um, I'm going to keep doing them regularly. I don't know if I can commit to doing them every week, just because they do, you know, require effort from me <laughs> mentally and just kind of time-wise, and I'm quite busy during the holiday season. But next year, uh, starting at the new year, we'll kind of see where we're at with that and see if I want to go back to doing them once a week like I was doing before. Um, I will do them regularly until the end of the year, for sure. Just maybe every couple of weeks or so. Um, maybe once or twice a month. So that's the long answer to your question, which is <laughs> they... Um, oh, good. Yeah, you can pre-order it. So go ahead and check it out. I think if you just type in my name. It's called Watercolor Wonderlust. That's the title of the book. Dad, if you want to type my name in and the title of the book in the comments, that would be super helpful. Um, are you adding a little a highlight on tree branches or that's how, no, that's just how it's drying. Those are kind of half dried trees. So um, that's just how it looks right now, but they're just total silhouettes. So they won't look like that at the end. Um, I've also been working on, I'm showing at my very first art fair in two weeks, two weekends from now, um, a local one here in Cincinnati. And so I'm very excited for that and also nervous. So I'm just kind of trying to get everything ready for that. Um, and that's taken up quite a bit of my time as well. So I'm hoping it's successful, um, and worth the time that I'm putting into it. Um, so if you're local to Cincinnati, I don't know if anybody here is, but um, you can come say hi at the Hyde Park Art Show in two weeks on October 1st. So I'm very excited about that as well. So lots of, lots of things happening in the art world for me for now, which is really fun. Michigan, kind of close, yeah. Fair enough. It's a long drive down to Cincinnati, though. <laughs> Northeast Ohio. Nice, nice. Thank you. I post these on um, YouTube. So if you look in the link in my bio in the link tree, I have my YouTube channel linked in there so you can find it. And um, all of these lessons are posted there to my YouTube. So you can find it later. This one will be posted later today. And I think that's most, those are the two big things that are going on in my, in my art world life. You guys just get to hear about my life since we're painting trees. Um, is the top of the sky blues or purples? I feel like I can't tell with my phone. Um, it is both actually. So this here is purple. This is all purple here. And then it kind of transitions into a dark blue, um, bluish gray, I would say. So yeah. I, I imagine the colors are a little bit different on the screen than they are in real life, but um, yeah, purple into blue. You are my Bob Ross, Anna. Thank you so much. God bless. Is 
Is that a storm or just light coming through the clouds? It is actually going to be a galaxy, and that will be more clear when we add the stars, um, which is going to be our last step here. And I will make sure we get to that before we run it into an hour, just so that if people have to go, you can. Um, so finish your tree that you're on now, and you can always come back and finish your line of trees later. Um, we're not going to add anything else on top of them, so you can always finish your trees later just so that I can show you how we're going to paint the stars. So I'm just going to finish this tree here. Bob Ross would be proud of all of us. Yeah, he would. I feel like he definitely would be. Okay. Um, so for the stars, what you need is any sort of white opaque. Paint. And I probably should have said that at the start. But I do have lots of options here. So if you have gouache or acrylic paint, those will both work. Um, I have a tube of gouache because I work with gouache as well, so I'm just going to use that. Other options for you, you can use a white gel pen. You could use whiteout if you have it. Um, one other option, if you want to be super brave, if you have like an X-Acto knife, um, you can actually, this is like a little fun fact, you can actually, let me see if it'll work, very carefully just kind of pick out a little spot of paper with your X-Acto knife and create a star. <laughs> so if you want to just poke some very small holes in your painting, you can do that. <laughs> Silver would work great too. Anyway, um, those are your options. So choose whichever one is uh, accomplishable for you. I'm going to use gouache. And what we want to do is put stars everywhere. Um, we want to kind of fade them out as we get toward the light area, so towards the purple and the pink and the orangey parts, um, because that's kind of when the stars would naturally sort of fade. You can only see them when the sky is dark enough. Um, and then we do want to concentrate them in the Milky Way here, just a little bit more than we do on the outside, just to kind of lighten that area up and show what it is. So, um, I totally ruined my mom's artwork with that knife. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, use with caution. Supervised by an adult, obviously. Um, and I'm just going to use my gouache and just start putting in some stars, some little dots. And the key to this is to be just as random as possible. So you don't want to like space them out super evenly. You want to have some that are clustered together, some spaces where there's just no stars. You want to have some that are super tiny, so you're using a super light pressure with your brush, and then some you can press down a little bit harder to make them bigger. Add in a little bit more. Um, so you're just going to kind of do that all the way down the paper. And I find if you do it quickly, that helps with the randomness here, because you can't control everything so tightly. Um, and then you can go back in and add some slightly bigger ones after you've done that. So for demonstrating, I was going a little bit slower, but in actuality, I'm probably going to go around this speed here. Just because it helps with the randomness. You know. So do not use white watercolor, right? So yeah, the white watercolor that you have is not going to be opaque enough to show up. Um, it might start out that way and you might think it's going to work and then it will fade as it dries. Um, and so that's why I recommend using. You could probably use it in a pinch if you really, really saturated it and really got in there with your brush. Um, but that's why I recommend using some sort of opaque paint for this just because the background is so dark. Um, it's really hard for that white watercolor to show up properly. So here we go. We're going to add some stars around here too and just more spread out in this area. Can you use acrylic? Yep, absolutely. Gouache is a, um, hard to explain, but it's sort of a mix in practice of watercolor and acrylic paint. So you can water it down and it will act very much like watercolor, a little bit more opaque than regular watercolor, but it'll still act that way. And then you can use it more closer to how it comes out of the tube and it's 
opaque. Um, so you can paint light on top of dark, which you can't do with watercolor. And it's also reactivatable like watercolor is, and acrylic is not that way. So that means you can, once it dries, it can be reactivated with water. You can re sort of mix it. Um, and so you can do that on the paper or on your palette which is super helpful because then if you have paint that dried, you can reactivate that and keep using it. Or on your paper, when you're painting with it, you can um, blend things because even after the paint is dry, you can reactivate it with water and it will blend together a little bit better. So um, it's kind of the best of both worlds between watercolor and acrylic paint. Acrylic paint, you can't reactivate. Once it's dry, that is dry. You will not be able to reactivate it. So um, I really like using gouache. It's a little bit less well known, I would say, um, but there's plenty of like there's plenty of information online that you could find about gouache and how to use it. I have some tutorials on my TikTok page as well if you're curious. Um, but it's definitely worth a try. It's super forgiving. Um, you can make mistakes and cover them up and all that stuff. So, would highly recommend if you're interested in a new art medium. You, would you mind explaining how you got the texture in the sky? Yeah, so that was kind of um, that was kind of the bulk of the lesson today was how to do that. It was layers, so adding different colors, um, and we did like two or three layers of this paint on top of each other, so that helps with the texture, and then also using a circular motion with your brush um, helps with that too. Um, and remember, we're fading out those stars as we get down to the purple area. You can add a few but just don't add them as concentrated as they are up here. And just keep going around your paper and adding stars until you're happy with how it looks. No worries. Can you use it on canvas or just paper? Um, you know, I don't know if you can use gouache on canvas. Um, I'm actually not sure. I always just use watercolor paper or mixed media paper, um, and that seems to work pretty well. I think it might be a little bit too watery to use on canvas, but you can always experiment with that. There's no rules about that. You can do whatever you want. How about non-bleed white? I'm, you know, I'm not exactly sure what that is. You'll have to explain to me what that is, because I've never heard of that. Prep the canvas with watercolor ground, it might, yeah, I think it would work for gouache if you prepped it with watercolor ground. Um, yeah, I think that would work. But that requires an extra step, so you just have to be prepared, prepared to do that. Dr. P.H. Martin Nonbleed. Oh, well, um, you can definitely try it. I've just really never heard of it, so I, I still don't know what it is. Um, but if it's white paint, honestly, it'll probably work. Okay, and then remember, this is another time where you can cross into overdone territory, um, just because it's very meditative to just keep adding these dots. So just pay attention to your painting um, and how it's looking and how many stars you have already. And just be aware that there is a time to stop. I think I crossed the line. <laughs> exactly. Overtone territory approaching. Exactly. I think I'm starting to get there too. But 
It's just so fun. I'm going to stop there. You can always add more stars. You just can't add less. So <laughs> my night sky doesn't, didn't try as dark as I was hoping. And now it looks a little silly. That's okay. Um, okay. Um, it, uh, that's just something that you learn with practice. Like I said, sometimes things, um, you'll just kind of get used to how, how dark your paint will dry. Um, and, You'll get used to how many layers you need to add to get it to the darkness that you want. All of that stuff just comes with practice, so don't beat yourself up about it. It is okay. And a little splatter along the galaxy. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. White uniball pen worked okay. Good. Nice. There are billions of stars and I'm painting them all. Excellent. I'm so happy for you. It's <laughs> awesome. Why did you leave the bottom right hand side with no trees? I'm going to um, add them now. I just wanted to make sure we talked about stars before we um, before we got done with the hour that I usually try to keep this within. So I'm going to add those trees now. Um, yeah, Michael is watching his college team play football, and it's apparently not going well. So I was wondering if you could hear him, and it turns out that you can. <laughs> Can you talk about the book again? Absolutely. So it's a um, watercolor how-to book, an instructional book. Um, they're all landscape paintings, like what I normally paint. Very similar to Paint and Sips. Um, it's my voice. I wrote, I wrote the text for it. I did the paintings. Um, and so I'm just kind of guiding you along some different watercolor paintings, watercolor landscapes, various different um, sort of biomes. The book is organized into like mountains, scenes, trees, forests. Um, desert scenes, water scenes, etc. So um, I, felt, I felt like that would be kind of a fun way to kind of go through that. And it is available for pre-order now. If you scroll back up in the comments, my dad put my full name and the name of the book, which is Watercolor Wonderlust. And I think you can pre-order it on Amazon right now. So if you just type in my name or the title of the book, you will find it. Um, and it'll come out fully next April. So if you pre-order it now, it'll... Um, be a little while before you get it, but <laughs> it will be there. Um, and it will also be available on ebook version. So if you prefer to read on a Kindle or, or a tablet or anything like that, it will be available um, in an electronic book form as well. And I appreciate you all if you choose to pre-order it. Yeah, thank you, Dad. Um, I appreciate you all if you choose to pre-order it now or if you choose to buy it later. That's always very um, helpful for me. So and I think you'll enjoy it. Ah, sorry. Just pre-ordered, thank you so much. Have you ever used Neocolor 2s? Um, I, no, I don't think I have. I don't, I don't know if I've heard of that before. Can you explain what they are? You draw monkey next? No, sorry. I'm mostly a landscape uh, artist. I don't really draw. I don't draw animals too much. All right, we're getting to the end here. Almost done with the trees. Can't you spray on the white a little bit with a brush so the stars are super in it? Yeah, you definitely could. Um, it kind of depends on the paint that you're using um, and the brushes. My brushes are super soft watercolor brushes, so that is a little bit harder of a technique to do. But if you're using acrylic paint, you can definitely do that. Or just a stiffer brush. I prefer to, to paint my own stars um, for paintings like this. Just, I don't know why, but I just prefer to. Um, but that is definitely an option for you for creating a random texture. Mm. 
no fillers, pure pigment in them. No, I've never tried those, but that sounds really cool. Let's check that out. Oh, we're so close. One more tree. The last tree. Cotton Candy Sunset, like blue, pink, and purple. I've actually done that before on a paint and sip. Um, there's one, I think it was called Birds on a Wire or something like that. I don't remember which number it was, but it was exactly that, those colors in a sunset, and then a silhouette of some telephone poles and some birds sitting on the wires. So if you want to try that, it's on my YouTube channel. Okay, there we go. We did it. Who ever thought that we would get to the end of that? <laughs> get to the end of painting those trees. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off the tape, which is always the best part and why you stick around for the rest of this painting, because that is just crisp right there. Yes, this tutorial will be on uh, YouTube. My YouTube channel is linked in my bio, so you can go subscribe if you want to. That way you just um, can find it later, find all of the paint and sips. This one will be uploaded later today takes a little while to get it downloaded from TikTok and then uploaded to YouTube, so that's why it's not immediate. Um, there we go. Thank you for showing the blotchiness and leaving it unpanicked. Yeah, absolutely. Blotchiness is good. <laughs> you don't necessarily want super smooth colors all the time. That's not how nature looks. There we go. Oh yeah, that's perfect right there. Um, so go ahead and sign your painting. And I like to put the date on mine as well. That way you can always look back and see your progress later. And um, yeah, thank you all for joining me. My last little announcements here. My uh, Etsy shop is linked in my bio um, and my Patreon are linked to my bio. So if you wanna check out my art and other tutorials that I make, please check out the Etsy shop in particular. Um, make sure you um, follow me, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram if you want to, um, and you can check out my YouTube channel for the tutorials here. If you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift for today's lesson, that's always super appreciated. Um, you can use my Venmo, which is listed in my bio, or if you click the link in my bio and scroll to the very bottom, there's a tab called Tip Jar, and um, that just makes it really easy for you to leave a tip in whatever way you want. So feel free to do that as well buy all the art exactly thanks dad um and i do hope you enjoyed if you'd like to post your painting on instagram i will do a little art gallery if i get enough um paintings on instagram if you show your painting and then tag me i can put them all on my story so you can see everybody's painting um so feel free to do that my instagram handle is the same handle as tiktok um, so you can find me there just tag me and then i'll put everybody on my story how much do you pay your dad? <laughs> dad doesn't get paid anything.